Shalom, next gen. Now, if you see me dressed like this, right? Either Jesus is coming very soon or something is brewing. I, I believe, um, I, I hope to, the two things are happening. Uh, but I want you to know I, I'm dressed, I'm, I'm ready to move. I hope you are. Ready to move? Huh? Yeah? We're getting there, we're getting okay. You, you need to start to move. Uh. So today we are continuing our disciple making a sermon series uh, with a sermon entitled The Great Omission 2. So at this rate, we'll probably overtake the Missions Impossible franchise. <laughs> you know, this Omission 2 now. Uh, but I, I want to know if, if any of you, um, you have ever experienced this, that you've been using something or you've been doing something and uh, you, you thought that that was the way it was supposed to be used or, some, or, or the way to do it, and then you discover one day that you've been doing it or using the thing wrong. Anyone? Nobody. You are so cool cats. So, well, I, I've been sleeping on a memory foam pillow for some time now. But I have yet to find improvement in my memory. <laughs> uh, so actually, I was hoping that this memory foam will help track my dreams. You know. But uh, dream on, you know, it didn't happen. So being so disappointed, I went to reread, relook at the, the specs of the memory foam pillow. And then I discovered something. That the memory foam is to help the pillow, not to help the person who is sleeping on it. Now, those of you, you, can, you kind of know this, right? So, but, but well, I, I thought the memory foam was to help me build my memory, but that didn't happen. So, you're asking me, Pastor, are you going to change your pillow now? Uh, well, let me sleep on it. <laughs> okay, why? Similarly, the Great Commission is something we should be quite familiar with, right? If you attended any missions conference at all, or if you attended countless missions conferences, you have encountered the Great Commission. And we should be familiar, and some, some of us are even over-familiar with it. But as Pastor Wilson shared in his previous sermon, he said our understanding of this Great Commission might be incomplete or maybe even faulty. And so it is vital for us to again unpack what Jesus really intended for us to obey. Okay, the Great Commission would be our great omission if we fail to fulfill it or if we only partially fulfill it. The Great Commission is about disciple-making. Jesus' command, Jesus' command is for each of us, say each of us, each of us to become a disciple-maker. Now, this is not new. This is inherent in our uh, vision motto, more people, more like Jesus. Is it more people, more like Jesus? The goal of discipleship is not only to nurture uh, disciples, which is the more like Jesus part, but it's also to ultimately raise disciples who will continue to make other disciples. That's the more people part. So faithful disciples will also be fruitful. Mature believers must image their missional God in making disciples. And that's why we are rolling out the disciple maker track or DMT for short. We realize that the Great Commission is only fulfilled when you and I become disciple makers. So today in our sermon, we want to touch on this big idea that God desires us to take the next step. Say, next step. Next step. God desires that we take the next step in disciple making. I believe all of us want to take the next step. For many of us, the problem is we have a big but. which is, I want to move, but how? But how? So don't worry, that's why we have created this campaign, Move, a disciple-making pathway so that you can get on the DMT, get on the disciple-maker track. By doing that, let's start re-examining again Matthew 28, now from verse 16 to 20. All right, follow with me. Or better still, read with me. Verse 16, eh? let's read together. Now, the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Now verse 19, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, 
teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. And so in this passage, we find three moves that we need to move if we were to become a disciple maker. So the first step in obeying this great commission is to move closer. Say, move closer. Move closer. Okay, eh? Matthew 28 verse 19a. Jesus told them, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Now this was, la- this was Jesus' last instructions. His commission to his disciples before his ascension to the Father. The mandate was for them to populate the kingdom of God with disciples from all ethnicities, Jews and, Greek, uh, and Gentiles alike. Now, contrary to what uh, we might understand the Great Commission to be, go is not the command. You know. Go, therefore, go is not the command. The central command in this commission is make disciples. It is, as we go, we make disciples. Or, off you go. Go on, make disciples of all peoples. And so the 11 disciples didn't just go everywhere all at once, but they made disciples wherever they went. Now, if all they had to do to obey was just to go, what would we have today? We have loads of reviews by them on tripadvisor.com. But what, what do we have instead? We have out of the 11 disciples, right? Today, more than 2.5 billion people consider themselves as Christians. So do you think they were successful? From this 11 to more than 2.5 billion today. So if our first step in becoming a disciple maker is to move closer, what are we to move closer to? And the answer is not what, the answer is who. We are to move closer to... Jesus to Christ. Right? Because a disciple is one who is growing in Christ's likeness. He or she is constantly imaging, constantly imitating Christ as his one or her ex- example. The question is always what would Jesus have done? How would he have felt? What would his response be? Who would he have prayed for? So that's what, what is going on in a disciple's mind. This is the aspect of what? The aspect of transformation. We want to become more like Jesus. But the disciple is also one who is submitting more and more of his life or her life to the Lordship of Christ. Now this is the aspect of obedience. So a disciple then is one who declares that Jesus is Lord and continually conforms to the image of Christ. Now the sad fact is what often happens over time is we stop moving closer to Christ. We stop becoming Christ-like. We stop allowing Him to be the Lord. We stay as what mere consumers of God's blessings. We only look to Him for our needs to be met. And by and by, it becomes all about us, how to satisfy us, how to bless us, how to help, help us flourish, to provide a way for us to attain our ambition. So there is little pursuit of Christ, His character, His heart, his purpose, his mission. So our obedience and our transformation grind down to a halt. And so the Disciple Maker track seeks to address this stagnation in our spiritual growth. Okay, this pathway is designed what? Based on a research found in this book, Move, by Greg Hawkins and Kelly Parkinson. In the book, in the book it reveals a four-stage spiritual growth continuum, which you should see on the screen, with which disciples move along, from exploring Christ to growing in Christ, close to Christ, and then finally Christ-centered. There are four segments in every church of, of these four groups. Okay, so let's start with the one on your left. Those exploring Christ, who are these? Those exploring Christ are honest seekers for the answers to life. They're seeking God. They're seeking. Uh, they're curious about uh, the, the Christian faith. What they need is they need to hear the gospel, and they need to see the evidence of authentic Christ followers. They may be beyond the church walls, but they also could be attending our services week in week out. It could be your sibling. It could be your spouse. It could be your children. It could be your parents. 
But they've been attending week in, week out, following you to church, but they have never made the decision to follow Jesus as their Savior and as their Lord. So they're still at the Exploring Christ segment. The second, growing in Christ. Those who are growing in Christ have made a decision to be a disciple of Christ. What they need is they need to be nurtured. They need to be followed up. They will be putting on Christ in many areas and also putting off their previous way of what living, thinking, and behaving. So instilling the spiritual practices and habits such as prayer, Bible reading, cultivating the spirit-filled life, and walking in obedience to God's word is foundational for this group. So moving along, the third, those who are close to Christ. Those who are close to Christ have integrated their life into their faiths in a, in a holistic way. They're able to be more independent and be personally responsible for their own spiritual growth. That means the pastor doesn't have to call them, hey, why are you not here in church? I miss you, I didn't see you. Have you been doing your Bible reading? Those who are in close to Christ already knows what is needed. They know what is needed to grow spiritually. So they have moved from being self-centered, self-driven to other people-centered, contributing their gifts and their ministry to the body of Christ at large. Okay? So as we move closer and closer to Christ, we will come to this segment called Christ-centered, the utmost right. Those who are Christ-centered are constantly and continually yielded to the Lordship of Christ in their lives. So with a deep and real love for Christ and for others, they are fully committed to actively represent Christ wherever they are, in school, at home, and at the workplace. They are considered Christ's workforce, willing to sacrifice and ready to be challenged to further God's kingdom. They are very clear about God's calling for their lives and they are fully committed to it. So as you can tell, spiritual growth takes time. It takes time. You cannot just jump from one segment to the other. You just have to move uh, patiently along from the left to the right. And that's why we call this a journey. It's a, it's a journey. It's not a, a quick step. It's a journey. With intentionality and a clear direction, it can be a journey for some, it, for some people without, without clear direction and intentionality. It can be a journey for some people who are what, what we call the wandering Christians. You know, in our midst, they go two steps forward, but then they go, they, they revert three steps back. And so every church has a fair share of wandering Christians, wondering what is the next step. So, well, wonder no more. The Disciple Maker track is here for us to chart our next steps in the spiritual continuum. It ensures that no one regresses, but all will move closer to Christ by taking the next step from wherever they now are in their journey. So no matter how long one has been a believer, no one can say that he or she is too old to grow. We don't grow old, as Ralph or Waldo Emerson says. It is when we cease to grow, we become old. And no one should stay stagnant, right? Whether we are exploring Christ, growing in Christ, close to Christ, or even Christ-centered, because growth is natural and expected for any living being. Now, when you see a two-month-old baby crying for his milk, that's considered normal. When you see a two-year-old waiting to be fed, that's expected and acceptable. But when you see a 20-year-old man still howling, still screaming for his food, that is not cute anymore. Right? What looks cute for a two-year-old, a two-month-old, it doesn't look correct when the person is 20-year-old. We expect a grown-up to be able to fend for himself, and when he becomes a parent himself, he should be well able to feed his children, his child, right? So we are expected to grow. The goal of the DMT, the Disciple Maker Track, is that we all move closer towards Christ-likeness until disciples become disciple makers. Tell the neighbor on your left, let's move closer. Okay, that's the first move. Closer. Right? The Disciple Maker Track ensures that as we move closer, no one is journeying alone, but that we Move together. Say, move together. Okay, move closer and move together. So Jesus said, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. And then here, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the 
Holy Spirit. So Jesus, in calling his disciples, his 11 disciples, to further make disciples, Jesus instructed that these new disciples be baptized. As a sign of what? As a sign of one's believing loyalty and submission to God. In Jesus' day, this phrase, in the name of, right, to be baptized, in the name of, was used legally and commercially to signify that those who came under the name belonged and become the possession of the name they bore. Okay? So that means that all who are baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit come under God's rulership and possession. They belong to God as His disciples and together constitute the body of Christ as participating members. You see, the body of Christ is unlike a club where members gather regularly because of what common interests or common objectives. It goes beyond addressing physical, practical, and social needs. The body of Christ is the church proper, fully submitted to the relationship and the rulership of her head, who is Christ. And hence, we are His church here because we constitute the body of Christ locally in Tangling, in Bukit Bato, as well as the online space. And as His church, the baptized ones, we move together to become disciple makers because disciple making is a team event. You need what? To have disciple making, you need disciples and disciples. You can't just have one party, you have to have together. It's a team event. So with this in mind, God has actually designed the church for this purpose, to fill the church with spiritually gifted so as to equip the church for her mission to make disciples, to be disciple makers. Paul speaks about these five four primary equippers, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers, so that the body may be equipped and built up to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. So until we reach fullness. Now, Pastor Wilson is going to talk more about that next week in his sermon. So on top of these five uh, special ministries, on top of that, the Holy Spirit has, has actually gifted all of us. Nobody is exempt. All of us with also gifts, spiritual as well as practical, so that we can contribute these gifts back to the body and help each other by encouraging and by what? Bringing edification to his body the strong helping the weak, the young strengthening the old, the wise and the more experienced guiding the new believers. All working together for this one purpose in a complementary fashion. This will ensure that not only we grow, but we grow in a balanced, healthy, safe and steady environment. Okay, towards what? Always towards maturity in Christ's likeness. So disciple making does not happen like this primarily in a lecture or in a classroom. It, it, and it's not effective, one to many. It is actually more effective in the context of a small group, one to five or less. People who are committed to journey together. We call this life-on-life disciple-making journey. So, some of you may not know, I used to teach the guitar. And I discovered that everyone benefited from what? From individual attention. You know, difficulties may arise from multiple factors, right? Some people, the, the fingers are too short. Some, pe- some people, it's too painful. For some people, the progress is just too slow. For some, they're musically declined. You know? But these challenges differ one from, from the other. You know? It's not the same. So you need to, what well, you need to have, a, a focused individual approach. Because the guitar itself remained the same. But the approach had, has to be what? Tailor-made to be effective. So the saying teach until vomit blood, is very graphic, but nonetheless true. You want to give special attention to work out the special needs, it takes a lot of work. Now, Jesus, our master disciple, uh, disciple maker, took three years to intentionally journey with his disciples. So I empathize with Jesus. No wonder at the end of it, he sweat drops of blood. But what was beneficial? Because they were so close to him, they saw what he did. And they saw how he did them. They learned what was important to him and what captured his attention, his time and his energy. They were mentored by him up close. 
It was their teacher, their model, their standard, their inspiration for disciple-making. And every moment with Jesus was a disciple-making moment. And so the church, in continuing Jesus' ministry, seeks to inspire and equip disciples life on life so that they too eventually become disciple-makers or disciples by emulating or following and following and experiencing other disciple-makers. It is when we move together via intentional disciple-making relationships that we follow closest Jesus' method of disciple-making. Amen? So say to the one on your right now, let's move together. So two moves already, right? Move closer, move together. So wherever we are on this disciple-making track, we need to do one more thing. Not just move closer, move together. We also need to move deeper. Say deeper. Okay, Jesus said, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And here it is, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. Teaching them to observe all. What is this all? What constitute this all? You know, definition of discipleship, what is it? It's this one. The, de- the definition of discipleship is this. Discipleship is the process of becoming like Christ in every area of one's being. Every area of one's being. What are these areas? So we have simplified uh, this, so as not to overwhelm us, we have simplified these areas to just five key growth areas or indicators. They are like the vital signs that doctors will monitor and measure when you go for a health check, a health screening. Maybe they will, they will take uh, your blood pressure, they will look at uh, you know, your respiratory rate, they will see uh, your pulse rate. They will see where, how much oxygen you're actually taking. So these are the indicators. These are five. These five indicators that I will show you are a snapshot of our current uh, spiritual health, current state of spiritual health. Now, over time, with regular monitoring, we can determine how well we are developing and whether there are areas that we need to focus our attention on. Okay. So these five growth key growth areas are summed up with this acronym: K W R. S S. Okay, K W R S. So starting from the top sector at 12 o'clock, it's the K is no. Say no. No. What is this? This is the area of our core beliefs. The question is: how am I growing in God's word? To go deeper, you need to assess how are you actually growing? You are, are you allowing God's word to shape and transform your thinking and your value system? How often do you engage with God's word? Once a week, as often as you can, daily, or only in a crisis. See, a next step for you this year could be to read the Bible, the whole entire Bible, if if you've never done so. You should try, you should do it. That's your first step. Or follow a Bible reading plan, like uh, our daily bread or some online plan that you can do together with your friends. Because the more you engage with God's Word, the more you will grow. The research has found that the main catalyst for spiritual growth comes from what? Comes from the Word of God. It is His truth that sets us free and allows us to live fully. Therefore, it is vital for us to be constantly filled with His Word so that everything that proceeds from us has His Word as our source. Which leads us to, moving clockwise now, to the W. Walk. Say, walk. Is it there? It's not there anymore. Okay, sorry. So, if you took a picture, it's fine. So, any, okay, the first one at the top is no. As you move clockwise, the next sector is walk. Uh, it's back there. Walk. Thank you. Our core beliefs, what we know, must translate to how we act. It must impact our behavior. Now, this happens only what, when we have a conscientious cultivation of spiritual habits, such as prayer, fasting, Solitude, spending time alone with God and reflecting on God's Word. Lasting change, as Joel noted, comes from the inside. comes from the inside out, where our outward behavior exhibits the change that begins in our inner, seat, in, inner self, which is the seat of our, what? our emotions, our will, our motivations. So what is one area that you need to put off self and put on Christ? That's your next step. Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you. Maybe it's your perspective, maybe it's your words, the words you use, your work ethics, your study ethics, your social circle, your Google habits that need changing. 
Or maybe it's a mindset that's stopping you from being renewed to conform to the image of Christ. Whatever it is, our walk is important because our walk helps us to align to the nature of this God, the holy nature of this God we say we worship. So the second sector is walk, R. What is R? R is relate. Say, relate. relate. Now the first two, know and walk, you can, you can probably do well on your own, but the next three has to do with people, others, has to do with others. You can't do this on your own. Because the, the third one is relate, which is the area of our relationships. The question now is, how, how is my love for people? Do I actually love people? Some people love the Lord, but they don't love people. But that's not like Christ. Because the new commandment that Jesus gave us was what? To love one another without exception. But relationships can be demanding and depleting, energy depleting. But our love for people is the proof that we are indeed His disciples. Now I say, Pastor, how... Tell me how to hug a porcupine. You know? Because a porcupine is a porcupine also, right? When you encounter people who are porcupines, you have to be careful. How do you hug? Carefully, with a lot of grace, with a lot of uh, generosity, with a lot of kindness. You know? So is there a member in your family that tests your patience? Who is high maintenance? You know? That you would rather avoid this Chinese New Year? Ask the Lord to help you see people as He sees. To take one small step towards them, regardless of whether you think that person deserves it. Relate. As disciples of Christ, we have our work cut out for us, you know, to build loving relationships with those we know and to extend this love to others that God will give us the privilege to know. So you have no K. W, walk, R, relate. And the first S is the word serve. Right? An immediate area where we can show our love is our, in our willingness to contribute to the body of Christ. Because God has given each of us different gifts so that each can have a part to play in moving His church forward. But this requires that we faithfully steward these gifts by discovering, de developing, and willingly offering them up in ministry. Right through a process of elimination, I discovered what I was not gifted, not called, not cut out for. So there was a mission trip that Pastor Kelvin and I went for, and we were assigned to do what? To do puppetry for children. We had no prior training and possibly no talent. <laughs> so the children were scared to death, huh? and they started bawling from the beginning, you know. So let me encourage you, if you have not started serving, begin with the easy tasks. All right? Begin with that, and then you know whether you're cut out for it. Because much of serving is availing yourselves to meet a certain need. See, our faithfulness in small beginnings will lead to being entrusted with greater responsibilities. So I discovered children's ministry was not my gifting. So the point is, we cannot grow deeper without serving, because Serving is discipleship. Your service to the body of Christ is not to fill a number or a name. It is to enable you to realize the potentials that God has invested in you. Joy and fulfillment result from matching your ministry to the need. Crying children result from the mismatch of your, your giftings. <laughs> so we've got no, we've got walk, we've got relate, we've got serve, and the last S is share. Say share. share. No, the difference between serve and share is that share, we are compelled by God's love to reach out to those who are outside His kingdom. Because incorporated in Jesus' call to observe all, right? He also commanded us to what? To move with compassion for the spiritually lost and those who are seeking earnestly. Grace's Assembly's mission is this. If you've never heard it, never seen it, it's here. It's to raise spirit-filled Gracians who love God, love people, and make disciples of Jesus Christ within and beyond the church walls. Actually, Pastor Wilson just quoted it in his video. See, when we make disciples within the church walls, and we thank God for the last 70-something years we've been doing that, but we've only just begun to fulfill the entire mission that Christ has given us. Partially fulfilling is not fulfilling. 
So we need to take another step. A great omission to the Great Commission is failing to share God's love with those beyond our church walls. Where do they need a light? Not when you're all full of light. They need a light when, when it's dark outside. So what can you start doing to take this next step to share? Maybe buddy with a fellow Gracians, a fellow Christians, and commit to sharing God's love beyond these walls. Pray together with fellow believers for opportunities to be the, law, uh, to be the salt and the light, whether in school or at your workplace. Schedule your calendar to be an intentional blessing in our community outreaches or in our local missions. Or perhaps save up for a missions trip to participate in overseas disciple making. But you may say, Pastor, I'm one of those submarine Christians. I only surface and emerge during the weekends. So what should I do? So let me tell you, if you're a submarine Christian, don't go deeper. You hit the, the sea bed. You need to move higher. You need to show your show face a bit more. But for the rest of us, we need to move deeper. If you were to observe all that God has commanded us, that Christ has commanded us to teach that we need to be holistic. We need to go deeper in every area, in our, in our know, in our walk, in our relate, in our serve, and in our share. Whether we are exploring Christ or whether we are already Christ-centered. Keeping tap on these five key areas ensure that we have balanced and healthy growth. You know, when a doctor examines a person and says, oh, you've got a very strong, uh, very strong lungs, but a weak heart. Or you've got a, a very small head, but you've got a very big waist. You know, you, you're headed for, for trouble. You know? So when we do go deeper, we are not just going anywhere deeper. We are moving deeper in all the key areas so that when we grow deeper, we actually grow stronger in a balanced and healthy way. Tell your neighbor, let's move deeper. Amen. So what are the three moves? Move. First one is what? Closer. Number two, move together. And the third was to move deeper. Now God desires us to take the next step in all this. By how? By moving closer. By moving together and by moving deeper. You know the progression from disciples to disciple makers. Eh? You, if, you, if you didn't catch this, look at this verse. Matthew 28 verse 16. Right? Matthew said, now the 11 disciples. So they were disciples, right? They came to Jesus. And then Jesus commanded them and gave them the commission to what? Verse 19, to make disciples. So in four verses, the Lord moved them from just being a disciple to becoming a disciple maker. The glaring difference between a disciple and the disciple maker is this. A disciple is one who is content with consuming, with being spiritually well-fed and materially flourishing. But a disciple-maker is concerned about the hungry being fed, the broken being restored, the spiritually lost being found, the despondent finding hope, and the distraught having peace. His focus is on what? Those who have yet to enter God's kingdom and helping them to move from being a pre-believer to be a disciple and ultimately to become a disciple Maker. And we are called to partner with Jesus in disciple making to keep expanding his kingdom until he returns as the Lord and King over the nations. You say, Pastor, wow, that's a lot of information. In fact, too much information. Well, we understand. So don't fret. That's why we will give you the info card on your way out. Right? And then you can do your quick revision and reconnect the dots if they are floating somewhere. But the most important takeaway today is not to memorize all this. It's not an exam. The most important takeaway today is to start the process of becoming a disciple maker. So tell one another, let's start. Two, move closer. Move deeper. And move together. Amen. Let's stand. Let's stand. Disciple making is a lifestyle, right? It has to be more than a program we adopt. A skill we learn, a goal we set, a strategy we formulate, a target we reach, 
or an outcome we desire. It has to be who we are. Discipleship, disciple making starts with who we are, not just something we do. It is saying yes to Jesus, not only to be his disciple, but to be his disciple maker. This will not be easy and in all probability, messy. Now, because disciple making is a lifestyle, it is a lifelong taking of small steps toward becoming a disciple maker. Today, if you haven't started on this great adventure of becoming a disciple maker, will you take the first step today? You can scan the QR code. Alright, and or visit the booths at level 2 and talk to those of us with the t-shirt move to find out how you can take that first step. But for some of you, you've been making disciples for a long time. Well, don't stop. Continue by taking the next step of what? Of raising other disciple makers like yourselves. So as we just bow our heads and close our eyes before the Lord, I believe the Lord has spoken to us. It's a very simple thing. It's not a difficult, it's not rocket science. It's moving from just being a disciple to become a disciple maker. From believing in Christ to living as His disciple and finally becoming His disciple maker. So that we won't miss the Great Commission by the Great Omission. So as we embark on this disciple maker track, you sense the Lord prompting you to take the next step in disciple making. All heads bowed, all eyes closed. Maybe you belong to this first group. You say, Pastor, I want to move closer to become more like Jesus, more like my Lord. And you long for true and real spiritual nourishment so that you can be ready to assume full responsibility as a disciple of Christ in discipling others. If your prayer today is, I want to move closer, count me in, Pastor. I want you to lift your right hand to the Lord. Thank you. I see those hands. Yes, I see many hands on my left. Those on my right. You say, Pastor, I want to move closer. I see your hand, brother. Yeah, I see that hand. Yes, you're lifting your hands to the Lord, not to anybody. So the Lord sees you. The Lord sees your heart. Thank you for those hands. And maybe you're in the second group today. You understand that you've been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Not only does that admit you into the body of Christ, but that you are fully submitted to the Lordship of God. And as a member, as you stand there with your eyes closed, you realize that you're obligated and committed to journey with others to fulfill the Great Commission. If you want to take the next step to move together with others in intentional, disciple-making relationships. No one looking around. I also want you to lift up your right hand to the Lord to indicate your willingness to come in. Thank you for those hands. I see here on my, on my right, on your left. Thank you for those hands. Yes, no one looking around. If that's you, you want to move together. And you want to move strongly together with people, with someone to encourage, to edify, so that all of you will become disciple-makers. If that's you, you can lift up your right hand again to the Lord. Thank you. Yeah, I see your hand in front. Thank you, brother. You can put that hand down. Finally, a third group. A third group of you. you say, Pastor, I haven't been growing holistically. And at best, maybe haphazardly. I want to take the next step in disciple making by conscientiously focusing on an area of much needed growth. Something that I know I need to grow in. Whether it's no walk, relate, serve, or share. And you want the Holy Spirit to help you move deeper in these areas. No one looking around. If this is your desire, I want you to lift your right hand to Him right now. You say, God, I want to move that. Yeah, thank you for that. Yeah, I see your hands in front. I see some hands at the back. Yes, thank you for those hands. You're coming before the Lord to say, God, I don't want to miss the Great Commission. I don't want the Great Commission to be my Great Commission. But I want to move closer. I want to move deeper. And I want to move together to take that next step. 
So before the musicians come, before the worship leader comes, if you have lifted up your hand or if you haven't, let me encourage you to come out to the altar so that we can minister to you in prayer. The next step in disciple making can only happen when you actually take a step of faith, when you actually move out of your comfort zone. And so if you see somebody there, you say, do you want to come out together? Let's move together. Or the Lord is prompting you and you lift up your hands. Even if you have not, the altars are open. Come out so that we can minister to you. So remember, the first step is to take that step of faith, to actually move. Jesus be the center Let's move out now. You heard the, the Lord You're responding to the Spirit. Jesus be the Let center Jesus be the center. Move closer, move deeper, move From together. beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. 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 For those of you who need to start moving, come and respond. And if you see someone that you know leaders, come and pray for them. Come and stand together with them and pray with them. The rest of us, let's declare this. Jesus be 